Hey, good day everybody, this is Joe. Hey, welcome to part seven of the Abacus series. Continuing on from our last episode, which was the counting method of addition and subtraction using the 2-5 Chinese version of the abacus. Today we're going to cover how to use the counting method for the 1-4 Soroban, the most modern Japanese configuration of the abacus, and also how to use it for the 9-bead abacus. This was uh, just a small portion of my collection of 1-4 Japanese Soroban, starting from this smaller one down here on the left. What's notable about all the ones I took out of my collection today is they all come with boxes or containers of some kind. This one right here has a cool little uh, worn little cardboard box with a little number on the end, and uh, this plastic Soroban here, a little bigger one, with white beads has this interesting little Siawa brand Soroban with some little Soroban decorations on the box and then this wooden one there's those fall over this wooden one a little bit bigger nice joinery on this one by the way very nicely built and a really cool abacus modernist style artwork and then this even bigger an abacus with really great joinery and construction methods and it has this kind of uh, you might call it an alligator skin kind of uh, box here with again the little label on the end and then there's this So I went to my favorite thrift store yesterday and this I found with this wonderful zippered soft cloth carrying case and the interesting little instructional manual that came with it. I thought this was so cool. I've never seen a soft zippered case for an abacus before, uh, for Japanese abacus, so I thought this was a really neat thing. It kind of reminds me of a slide rule case. Very neat. So we're going to use this Soroban to show how to do the counting method with the 1-4 configuration. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, let's start by clearing our Soroban. Now, if you might remember from last time, the three basic principles of the counting method were representing your numbers, regrouping your numbers, and remembering your count. So represent, regroup, and remember. And so representing numbers, we'll start on the units column on the right here. Let's do the counting from one through nine. One, two, three, four, five. Notice that transition. 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, pretty simple. You can represent the single smaller numbers directly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like that. Let's uh, go through a practice operation with the 1, 4 Soroban. Now, the difference, obviously, between the 1-4 and the 2-5 is the number of beads on each rod. There is a single 5-bead above the bar, a 4 1-beads below the bar, and you can only represent a total of 9 on each rod. So let's go with, uh, for instance, 1 plus 4. So 1 plus 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Going from 4 to 5 is kind of similar to regrouping but you're advancing the, t the count one bead's worth as you're doing that, right? So let's do our problem, let's say four plus three, right? So we can chunk the four and we can go one, two, three, right? Four plus three is seven. Four plus four, there's four, one, two, three, four. Four plus four is eight. Five and a three is the eight. Let's take our classic problem of six plus seven. Remember that from last time? Six, that we just chunked it. Seven is three, four, five, six, seven is 13. Let's do that again. Six plus seven. I first chunk part of it is the three, and then I advance the count to four while I'm regrouping. Five, six, seven. What I did during that operation was I chunked part of the seven initially as a three, and then I started counting up from there. So I got three, four, I regroup, right? 
count up, regroup, five, six, seven. And you could have chunked that in one step, but it's easier sometimes just to count it individually. However, whatever works best for you. So the real difference in operation between the 2-5 Chinese abacus and the 1-4 Japanese soroban comes down to the regrouping is like you're regrouping, but you're advancing the count one at the same time. For instance, if you go from four and you want to add two, you're going to be advancing the count and kind of regrouping at the same time. That's one, two. So it's a little different than the Chinese abacus, but it functionally gives you the same results. Okay, let's try the counting method with the nine bead abacus. This is one of my homemade nine bead abacuses with the alternating light and dark color scheme. So of course there's nine beads on a rod. We're gonna assume this rod here on the right is our units column. So let's first talk about counting. How do you count the numbers? And how do you advance them? Well, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's how it works. And that's representing numbers, right? And of course, if you remember from a previous episode, one of the advantages of the alternating color scheme with the nine bead abacus is that you can easily tell if a number is even or odd by the end colors of a grouping. So for instance, this is four, four is an even number. The end colors are opposite colored. So even numbers have opposite colored ends. Odd numbers, like that's five, have this even numbered, uh, or the same color on the ends. Uh, uh, for instance, if I already have a 1 entered and I want to enter 5, I know that's 5 because it's about a medium sized group and the end colors are the same. 5 is an odd number, end colors are the same with odd numbers. If I was adding 6 instead, 6 is about a medium sized group, but the end colors are opposite because it's an even number. So there's the little visual cue that this alternating color scheme affords you. Okay, so counting or representing numbers. Very simple with a nine bead abacus. Uh, now let's look at how we do a simple problem. So, and of course we're gonna use chunking with this. Let's try four plus three. Four plus three, very simple. Seven, right? Uh, six plus two is eight. Well now let's look at, like our old problem, six plus seven. There's six. How did I know that was a six? Well, the end colors are opposite. It's an even number that I knew that was a six. Six plus seven. So we're gonna go three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, six plus seven is 13. Let's try that again. Six, I'm gonna add seven. I'm gonna chunk part of it. So three, remember I'm remembering, having to remember where I'm at in the count. That was one of our principles, right? Remembering, I know I have to remember two numbers. I have to remember the number I'm counting up to, and I have to remember where I'm currently at in the count. So I have six, I'm gonna add seven. I'm currently in three of seven, four, five, six, seven. Now that transition, let's look at that again. So I had six, I am adding three. I wanna add a next one. I I'm going to clear off the units column as I'm adding the next higher number, advancing the count and doing the regrouping at the same time. In many ways, the 9-bead abacus is very similar to the 1-4 soroban in the sense that the counting up and the regrouping happen at the same time you don't have the extra beads like you do on the Chinese abacus. Okay, that was six plus seven. Let's try something like, a, like our old friendly problem, 123 plus 456 is 579, right? Let's take uh, 248 plus 390, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for a total of 645. I just pulled that number right off the top of my head. You'll notice with the nine bead abacus, clearing the numbers is real simple, real easy. You just flick it like that, it's ready to go. Whereas with the quinary abacuses, the five, two, 
5141 abacus, you have to do the two-step clearing. You have to flick it, and then you have to clear the upper row with your finger like that. Okay, nine-bead abacus, representing numbers, regrouping, remembering where you're at, chunking the numbers. One four abacus, essentially the same process. Representing numbers, regrouping as you're counting, remembering where your count is at. Same process. The key to becoming proficient at the abacus is really practice. That's all it is. Uh, you have to sit down and find time in your day to take a column of numbers and add them up. One thing you can do if you want to do a little bit of practice on the abacus is uh, take a store receipts. It, like a grocery receipt is really a great thing to use for the abacus because it's typical when you go to the grocery store, you have a whole column of items. You're not just buying one or two items. You're buying a whole bag or several bags full. So grocery receipts are great for practicing the abacus. Well, since we've already covered the counting method of addition in these last two episodes of the Abacus series, I thought it would be pretty easy now for us to just to transition into subtraction. How to subtract using the counting method for the Abacus. We'll start with our basic little problem that I tend to always use of, let's say, 13, and let's subtract 6 from 13. So we're going to be using the counting method. We're going to be counting down uh, one at a time, and when we run out of beads to count down, we're going to regroup from the next higher column. So 13 minus 6, so 1, 2, 3, regroup by taking out a 10 and making a nine, that's four, five, six. The result, is, the remainder is seven. Let's go over that once more. 13 minus six, minus one, two, three, regroup, four, five, six. And the result is seven. Of course, you could do the 13 minus seven the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the result is six. You could take a little bit larger number, uh, let's say 123, and I'm just going to pull off the top of my head, let's say minus 58, so minus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Result is 65 left. So in subtraction, using the counting method, we're just counting down one at a time. And when we run out of beads, we will, like in this case, 13 minus 6, 1 is 1, 2, 3. We regroup by taking away a bead from the next higher row and representing 9 on our current row. And that also counts for subtracting one more number, 5, 6, Regrouping and the subtraction of the number occurs in the same step. Just like with addition and the 1-4 soroban, the regrouping and the adding of the next higher number also occurs during the same step. Subtraction and the 9-bead abacus is quite simple. We clear the abacus. We'll do our same little problem. 13 minus 6, for instance, minus 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, and the remainder is seven. Let's look at that transition again. 13 minus six, minus one, two, three. To subtract the fourth number, I subtract the 10 and push up the nine on this one to, the, to do the regrouping, five, six, and the remainder is seven. I know it's seven on the nine beat abacus because it has the even or the same end colors on that group, so it's an odd number. 123 minus 58 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 50, and 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The answer is 65. You notice in that transition I did, there was a little bit of motion you can do, like uh, one, two, I can do the 10, take away the 10 or the 100 and move up the 90 in one pinching motion like that. It speeds up the operation.
Well, you might ask yourself, well, Joe, where am I going to get an abacus? Do I have to go online and buy one? Yeah, you could do that. Actually, if you go to Amazon, there are sellers selling abacus there. And there's also, of course, on eBay, people selling used abacuses on eBay. But uh, I've always enjoyed going to thrift stores for the abacus, for buying used abacuses. And all of these I've purchased found at thrift stores over the years. As I indicated earlier, this one here with its soft case is the newest one to my collection. But it's kind of fun when you're wandering through a thrift store and you find a new abacus, especially the Japanese Soroban because they're built so well. The construction with these little uh, metal bushings with pins, they're pinned re really precisely. The joinery is really precisely done on a lot of the Japanese Soroban and as other times when I'm collecting abacuses, I will also at times save the receipts, especially if it comes in a box where you can keep the receipt. So this one, for instance, we can open this receipt up and see that I bought this at the I-40 Antique Mall, 12th Street in Albuquerque, back in November 15th, 1996. And I actually bought three abacuses that day. Yeah, I remember that day. We were down there and I found three abacuses in one day. I need to remind you that the counting method that I've shown you in the last two episodes is a method that I developed that helps you to start in on using the abacus without having to learn the complementary arithmetic steps. The whole intention of the counting method is to make it easy for beginners to start in using the abacus regardless of what style it is a 2-5 Chinese a 1-5 older Japanese or the more modern 1-4 Japanese or even the 10 bead Russian abacus or the 9 bead abacus like this doesn't matter the counting method works great for addition and subtraction all you need to know is the three rules representing by counting numbers how to regroup when you need to and how to remember two numbers at the same time three simple rules. The whole point of the counting method, again, was was not to make the abacus operation fast and speedy, but to make it easy to use. The history of the abacus in Japan is they made it very efficient speed-wise. The technique that they developed makes it very fast operation using a lot of mental tricks up here to keep track of things. The sacrifice or the penalty you pay for that is a lot of mental rigor is required to learn that technique. My approach is just the opposite. The average person in America and in the Western world, their use or their need for calculating isn't based on speed. It's more based on expediency and efficiency. And I think if you want to learn this alternative method of using an abacus instead of pulling out your phone and using the calculator app or pulling out a cheap electronic desktop calculator. If you really want to enjoy a little old traditional cultural artifact from earlier in human uh, civilization, uh, the easiest way to, to learn that is the counting method. Well, I hope this encourages you. That's the whole point of the counting method is to encourage you to take that leap, go get an abacus and start using it. Have the courage to do it. It doesn't really take much. The counting method is so easy. So you can find abacuses online. Sellers on, on Amazon are selling new Asian-made uh, Soroban-style abacuses, the 1-4 style. And there are also available used abacuses on eBay. And also, typically, you can find these older ones in thrift stores, antique stores in your local community. I certainly have, over the years, found a lot of them. So encourage you guys, go pick up an abacus and start practicing it. Add up those grocery lists. A, a great way to practice the Soroban. Okay, guys, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.